So this is a quick demonstration of a pallet receivable simulation library model that I made available on my blog and the shop associated with my blog made it available as a downloadable virtual product and this video is meant to be embedded into the so to say product description as a demonstration and a documentation. Um, so what this model is about is simulating truck arrivals at a warehouse and then the um, arrival and assignment of trucks to dock doors, the unloading of pallets from the truck onto the staging area inside the warehouse and then the putaways of the trucks uh, of the pallets. And this is assumed to be done by a forklift. So you have trucks that arrive at the gate of the warehouse. From there, they're assigned to dock doors. And then after that, uh, you have forklifts that are transferring the pallets from inside the trucks into a staging area. Each truck has its own staging area. And then forklifts will put away these pallets in the warehouse. There is a configuration file in this project that allows you to adjust certain parameters. Then there's the framework which contains the classes and general logic for implementing simulation models related to truck arrivals and pallet um, transfers and receivables and putaways in a warehouse. And then there is the model file which contains an example implementation consuming the configuration file in the framework. And I will demonstrate that in this video. So, First of all, the configuration file contains those parameters here. You have a time window that you can specify. And within this time window, you will have the specified amount of truck arrivals. Um, then you have an amount of dock doors. And um, those are the, um, the points that where trucks can uh, be unloaded. Um, so if you have a lot of trucks arriving, but you have more trucks arriving than currently available dock doors, then you will have trucks queuing at the gate and from there they will be assigned to uh, newly available dock doors first in, first out. You have uh, an amount of forklifts that work in the staging area and um, that take the pallets from the trucks to the staging area and from there to the warehouse itself for putaways. You have a amount of pallets per truck and then you have a maximum amount of forklifts that can work on um, one truck's cargo. So this refers to both the staging area, transferring the pallets from the trucks to the staging area, and then from the staging area, putting away the pallet in the warehouse. Um, then you have a transfer time and a put away minimum and maximum time. So those are the times associated with transferring a pallet from inside the truck into the staging area. And the put away times refer to the range uh, that it takes to put away a pallet from the staging area inside the warehouse. And since this is done by forklifts, uh, the respective forklift is occupied during this time and cannot fulfill other jobs. And uh, the minimum and maximum time means that forklift time can be randomly distributed, uniformly distributed within this minimum and maximum value. The reason for that being that we are assuming chaotic warehousing. So we're assuming there is some warehouse area, but inside this warehouse area, there are several slots where you could put a pallet. And if we have chaotic warehousing, the likelihood of each slot is the same. And in that case, you can assume a uniformly distributed put away time between the nearest, so to say, slot and the slot that is the furthest away. So that is what is being done here and what you can parameterize. So you can adjust these values and run the model and see the results. The results, they will be stored in the simulation results directory. Um, you don't have to do this this way. This depends on your model implementation. In this case, um, you can see my model implementation here. You see that I consume the configuration file and the framework. And then here I'm looping over 20 days. So these are 20 business days that I'm simulating. And for each business day, I'm conducting a simulation and storing the results, in this case, as plots. You could do whatever you want with, um, in terms of your uh, downstream data analysis. But in this case, I'm simulating over each day. And for each day, I'm generating a graph showing the utilization of dock doors and the utilization of forklifts. Um, 
This year is just setting up the model itself and kicking off the simulation. And uh, this is pretty much what you can do every time. And it's just consuming the, um, the classes provided by the framework, which will be delivered together with this downloadable project. And then down here, after running the simulation, um, you can see here I'm creating uh, a plot using the, the data that I received from the simulation run. Um, and this is where you could uh, do it in whatever way you prefer. You could collect this data somehow and then create one plot summarizing all of the days, or um, you could just work uh, with a data frame and do whatever kind of analysis you would like. Um, yeah, and so kicking off the simulations then simply um, when using this model implementation, adjusting the values into configuration file, and once you did so, and just kick off um, the simulation through, in this case, PowerShell, the terminal. And um, then you can see the simulation is running here. There are some reports um, that are being printed that you can use for validation. And then the results are being uploaded here in the results folder. So let's see, for example, the first day, you can see here the simulated amount of available and occupied dog doors. Since trucks arrive in the morning, this is where the amount of dog tours being occupied will go up. And then at the end of the day, um, this is where the truck arrival time windows ends. In this case, we don't have any backlog. So um, after this time window, the amount of, of occupied dog tours goes to zero. We can have a, a look at the forklift utilization. So similarly here, you can see the amount of available forklifts and the amount of occupied forklifts. And now we can try to close these, these results and we can try to adjust, um, for example, the time window. We can say we reduce the time window. And now we have 40 trucks of arriving in, uh, within this shorter time window. And now I can rerun the simulation after saving the configuration file changes. And then we can look at the updated results. So in this case, we still have an excess amount of dock doors. We don't really need uh, the uh, amount of doctors that we have in this case. In this case, we have 12 doctors. They're never really used throughout the day. If we look at the forklifts, um, here we do have some peak utilization. I mean, we have in total up to um, eight doctors that are being used on day one, for example. Um, if we look at the utilization of the forklifts, uh, it said here that we have a maximum of um, three forklifts uh, per truck um, and this means in, 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 in a maximum this limits the, um, the maximum usage which is then um, 24 uh, forklifts in maximum that can be used 3 times 8 um, but it seems like there's no real uh, capacity issues in terms of the dock doors themselves. So um, we, could, uh, we could try to reduce the amount of dock doors, let's say to six and see if that's enough, even with the shorter time window. I update changes and I run the model again. And let's see here. Now we do have a a big utilis uh, 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 100% utilization throughout the day, but we don't really have a backlog issue because at the end of the time window, um, the utilization of trucks goes goes down again. Um, so I think 120 is around uh, around here, and it seems that um, the last truck leaves. Um, pretty near that uh, the end of the time window. So 
I wouldn't really say that here we have, a, uh, in terms of the doctors, a capacity issues. Um, but you could insert additional uh, KPIs, like for example, the average waiting time of a truck at the gate, um, the average uh, lead or dwell time of a truck at the warehouse, um, whatever um, KPI you want, you could add on top of the simulation. And um, this would be some customization that you have to do to the uh, framework itself. And if you need help with that, you could also contact uh, me, for example. But we could make some additional adjustments now. We could say, um, for example, let's say there are more pallets inside a, a truck. We run the simulation. As a, a much different picture. So we can see here we increase the amount of pallets per truck and um, the time window of truck arrival ends somewhere here. At the last truck or the last dock door is freed here around, um, well, way beyond that time window. So here we can see there is some delay in terms of trucks having to wait at the gate and, um, well, the forklifts are not really uh, fully utilized. And that is because we also limit the amount of forklifts that can work on a truck. So let's say we can make some adjustments to the staging area and it's somehow easier to access the truck and the staging area by multiple forklifts at the same time. So let's say we can increase this number to five forklifts that can work um, on one truck at the same time. Let's see the impact in the simulation results. And there you can see the situation has improved. So before that, the last truck uh, left around here. Now it is uh, more or less um, leaving after being processed at the end of the time window. So there's probably a small amount of delay time here, which could be measured in a separate KPI. But um, there is a clear impact of this change uh, of having more forklifts being allowed to work on one truck. If you look at the utilization, uh, we also have now a situation where we really use the entire forklift pool. Um, so it will probably have a positive impact if we, if we even had more forklifts now in operation. So let's say we increase this number to 35. And we can rerun the simulation. And now yeah, it seems like the situation has uh, improved even more. Yeah. The first uh, truck leaves um, much earlier. There's some variance here depending on the data. It's because of the randomness of when the trucks actually arrive during this time window. It could be traffic, it could be congestion one day, uh, or other issues. So there is some randomness in terms of when the trucks arrive. That is because the trucks arrive randomly within this time window. But more or less it seems like um, situation now where we don't really have any delays in terms of the last truck leaving outside of the time window. And um, it does seem like 35 forklifts is uh, 35 forklifts is a lot, so we barely use um, uh, 30 forklifts. So maybe the best amount in this case under these assumptions would be um, 28 forklifts. Um, but it might also be that you have a warehouse expansion and if you still have chaotic warehousing this means on average your forklifts have to drive further so let's say we increase this min uh, this, uh, this put away time the the upper limit of the put away time let's increase it by 50 percent and then we can uh, yeah, the simulation And um, this did have a slightly negative impact on the last truck leaving. So the last dog to are uh, freeing up again. And um, all it did also seem to increase the forklift utilization. So that's what we would expect, right? Uh, now it seems more like 30 forklifts would probably be 
a reasonable trade-off, uh, where you would still have um, more or less uh, the last truck leaving more or less in time, and uh, you would have not too many forklifts and uh, forklift drivers that you would have to uh, hire or employ. So, yeah, those are the kind of experiments that you can make with the simulator with that. And of course, you could do all kinds of customizations. So the underlying framework could be expanded. You could have um, different process branches, uh, more complex receivable processes. Um, that would just simply be a question of going into the framework and adding additional logic. And you could measure all kinds of KPIs and also the statistics that you would calculate on top of the data from the simulation could be any kind of statistic that you would want. Yeah, so you could measure distributions and histograms, you could calculate averages or whatever. So just a quick demonstration of this pellet receiver simulation model. And uh, yeah, I hope you found it interesting.